Hello and welcome to this screencast my friends in which we are going to talk about the pure expectations theory which is one of the theories seeking to explain the term structure of interest rates. So let us begin by saying that there are three uh, empirically observed term structure facts that we need to explain through the term structure theories. What are these facts? My friends fact number one is that interest rates for different maturities move together. Fact number two is that yield curves tend to have a steep upward slope when short term interest rates are low and a downward slope when short term interest rates are high. And fact number three is that yield curves have a typically upward sloping shape. There are three competing theories now uh, which seek to explain these three term structure facts. Theory number one is pure expectations. Theory number two is market segmentation and theory number three is liquidity premium. In this brief video, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to focus on the pure expectations theory and the pure expectation theory says that bonds of different maturities are perfect substitutes of each other. To see that, let us assume a few variables. Let us say uh, you have two choices and those two choices are represented in this table here, which has been divided in two columns. In this column, of the table we are going to focus on strategy number one which is to invest one dollar in a one-year bond and then when that bond matures you go ahead and buy another one-year bond and then in this column we are going to talk about strategy number two which is to invest one dollar directly in a two-year bond and then hold on to it for the moment let us return back to this column where our first strategy is to invest one dollar in a one-year bond which is offering you a, an interest rate which we call the coupon rate of 10% uh, per annum and is being denoted as I1. So we are going to get started by finding out our dollar return. What we need to find out is what is the amount of money that we are going to end up with at the end of the first year. Let us see. We are investing $1 and we are going to multiply it with 1 plus 0 0.10 to find out the ending amount because the interest rate is 10%. So inside the bracket here, I write 1.10 and then that is going to leave me with $1.10 at the end of one year, which I can very easily represent in notational terms. Let us see how. For this $1 here, I'm going to write a one and then for the item inside the bracket, that is 1.10, I'm going to write a one and then I'm going to write a plus sign and after that the interest rate which is equal to 10% but has been denoted as I1. So since we are writing in notational terms, I'm going to copy this I1 and paste it at this place and close my square bracket and that is pretty much it. Now you have $1.10 with you. Let me get rid of this question mark now and in place of that let me write 1.10. So you have $1.10 with you. And with that $1.10, you can go ahead and buy another one-year bond. And let us say that this time around, you are going to get a coupon rate of 11% on the new bond. And that 11% interest rate, we are denoting as I2. So then just like we did before, we are going to find out that at the end of the second year, what is the amount of money you are going to end up with. At the starting of year number two, you invested $1.10. So that is what I'm writing here. And then since you fetched an 11% coupon rate on your investment, I'm going to multiply this 1.10 by 1.11. And I'm going to close my bracket and let me see what I get. I'm going to get 1.221. So $1.221 is the amount of money that I end up with at the end of the second year. Now this 1.221 can also be very simply expressed in notational terms. Let us see how. For this 1.10, I know that this is the notation. So I'm going to copy it from this place here. I'm not copying this one because that doesn't really make a difference. Even if I copied this one, um, this term would have remained one plus I1 only. So I'm going to write here one plus I1 and then this 1.10 has been multiplied by 1.11, which is nothing, but in notational terms, it is equal to one plus the interest rate, which we have denoted as I2. So I'm going to write here an I2 
and that would be pretty much it. So, let me close the brackets and then let us review our position. What we have done is we have invested $1 and we have ended up with in place of this question mark let me write here 1.221. So, if I am required to find out my dollar return now, what I am going to do is I am going to write down the amount of money that I have made 1.221 and then from this I am going to subtract the amount of money that I invested that is $1. So, that gives me my net dollar return which is equal to 0.221 dollars or about 22 um, cents. This 0.221 dollars also my friends can be very simply written in notational terms. Let us see what this 0.221 is comprised of. It is comprised of this item here 1.221 which is nothing but this thing here. So, I am going to copy this from here and paste it at this place and then I am going to subtract my $1 investment from it. So, this becomes my return from strategy number 1 and then we can move on to strategy number 2 which is to invest $1 directly in a 2 year bond and then hold on to it. So, let us again start with $1 and this time we are investing it, direct, it directly in a 2 year bond and the coupon rate that we are going to get on it is 10.5 percent per annum and we are denoting that as I2T. Why we are writing 2T is because this bond is going to mature in 2 time periods. So, like we did before again let us find out the dollar return you will realize that basically what we are doing is that we are finding out the future value of our $1 at the end of 2 years uh, when the interest rate given to us is 10.5 percent per annum. So, let us see what happens you start with $1 and you multiply that by 1.105 and then raise this thing to the power of 2 because there are 2 time periods and when you carry out this calculation you are going to find out again that your answer is 1.221 and this 1.221 can be very simply written in notational terms. Let us do that. This $1 let us write it as it is and then the item inside the bracket is actually equal to 1 plus the interest rate that has been given to us here I2T. So, I am going to copy I2T and paste it at this place. Then I am going to close the square bracket and then I am going to raise this thing to the power of 2. So, I am done with my notation and then um, what is happening is that I if I invest my $1 and I end up with $1.2210 what I am going to find is that my net dollar return is going to be again the same as it was in strategy number 1 that is equal to 0 0.221 dollars or about 22 cents. This 0.221 can again be written in notational terms pretty simply what I am going to do here is. I am going to look at this number here 1.221 and I am going to realize that this 1.221 is nothing but equal to this item here. So, I am going to copy that from there and paste it at this place. I can get rid of this one because it really does not make a difference and then from this item I am going to subtract my $1 investment and that is going to be pretty much it in terms of a notational framework. Um, so, what you are going to realize is that no matter which strategy you follow you get the same return. In this case in strategy 1 your return was about 22 cents and in this case also you have the same level of dollar return. That means if both strategies my friends are equal in terms of providing return then one year bonds must be perfect substitutes of two year bonds and that is what pure expectations theory is. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to close this screencast here, but in the next one we are going to continue with the understanding that we have gained here and we are going to formalize it through the notational framework further. For now, it is bye bye. Thank you very much for watching.